Hey guys, welcome back. So we are full on in the swing of spring. Um, in fact, depending on where you are, summer might be closely on the heels, but the weather all around is getting nicer. The days are becoming longer. It's becoming sunnier, which I am loving. And that's actually the whole inspiration behind today's video, because I wanted to talk about some romances. But beyond that, I wanted to talk about romances that I think um, would be perfect spring slash summertime reads. Now, these aren't necessarily beach reads, but more so um, books I would say that just are the essence of the summertime or the springtime feelings. And by that, I mean that they um, hit a certain criteria. Well, a couple of them actually. And those are one, and most obvious, at least to me, the covers. Um, all of the covers give me the summertime, springtime vibes that I love, meaning that they are um, bright, a lot of pastels. Looking at them more often than not, they are landscapes of some sort, something that you would see in a painting um, depicting some place, fictional or real, that you wish that you could visit. And that alone is enough to make me pick a book up um, within these next couple of months because it puts me in that spring slash summertime frame of mind. In addition to the lovely covers, the plot lines are very heartwarming, which is definitely something that I'm looking for in this time of year that we're in. I want something that gives me the warm and fuzzies, but um, still kind of set in the outdoorsy springtime vibe that I'm craving right now. So a lot of these books, like I said, give you that and I think that's fantastic, especially if that's what you're looking for. And then beyond that, let's talk about the characters. All of the books in this series have a heavy emphasis on character development, which I personally love. Now, if you're at all familiar with romances, you know that romances run the gamut and a lot of times um, they're not, well, let me just say, <laughs> Not all of them are necessarily heavy when it comes to character development, which is totally fine. But in this case, that's definitely something that I'm looking for. And by that, I mean like close-knit families, um, a lot of heavy emphasis on family or friendship, either establishing new relationships or mending old relationships, just something to where the characters, and not even just the main character, but the characters in the book in general grow. The way that I've broken it down is mostly by author, because because I found that that's the easiest way to kind of give these suggestions. Now, obviously, for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through each of these authors' backlists because, as you'll see, these authors are very prolific. They have extensive backlists. <laughs> but at the very least, if the couple of series recommendations that I provide do pique your interest and you kind of breeze through those or you want to see what else they have, you're free to look up the authors and kind of um, pick whichever series speaks to you most. So that's that said, I'm super excited to talk about these books or rather these series and as always let me know if you have read any of these or if you have your own recommendations for romance books that you think perfectly suit the spring and summertime feels. Like you guys can already see I'm super excited about it. I've got pink on. I've got my cute daisy in the background. I'm just ready for all the springtime vibes and um, I feel like that's because this is the first time in a long time, let's say literally a year, <laughs> where we can finally start to go out to be out and about and actually um, soak up all of these sunny days and vibrant settings and flowers and just oh I love it so much so anyway I'm gonna stop rambling let's talk about the authors and their series So the first author that I want to kick off this list with is Jill Shalvis. Now, if you've been around my channel for a while, no doubt you've heard me talk about her, and that is because she is one of my, if not my most favorite romance author. I even have a reader's guide to her books, and um, she's perfectly suited for this list, to be honest, because her series and her books really check off, or rather meet the criteria that I mentioned before in terms of the gorgeous covers and the, um, the heavy emphasis on relationships relationships in her books, uh, the small town, the characters, etc, etc. Coincidentally, the first series that I'm about to mention, though, <laughs> doesn't quite take place in a small town technically, but rather a 
small niche within a larger city um let me just go ahead and tell you what the book is so that you know what i'm talking about but it's the heartbreaker bay series now this one i would kind of describe or rather i have described in the past as kind of like a melrose place type series meaning that it centers around a group of friends and um takes place kind of around this work live play specific building you know how obviously melrose place is an apartment building this is kind of the same thing but instead of just living there's also businesses so some of the characters have their businesses there some of them live there but regardless <laughs> it centers around a group of friends and how each of them subsequently find love in their respective books next let's talk about her wildstone series i adore this series as well um in terms of the plot line i'm not going to obviously give away every single book but basically it is centered around a group of estranged sisters and how they um in turn find their way to each other and kind of forge a relationship with one another lastly i want to also kind of piggyback off of that and recommend her cedar ridge series um this one actually takes place in a fictional town called cedar ridge and the entire series basically is centered around the idea of this fictional location which talk about perfect for spring and summertime because the descriptions that she has in her book especially for cedar ridge which I believe is a coastal town. I'm drawing a blank and I'm not remembering exactly, but a lot of her books are um, set on the West Coast in that kind of Northern California area. So you're definitely gonna get your um, nature descriptions, all of those outdoorsy vibes, which again is perfect for this time of year. Okay, so this next author actually was the driving force behind the entire idea of this video um, simply because of the gorgeous covers that they have. And I'm talking about Rayanne Thane. I have been obsessed with her book covers for the longest time. In fact, I believe that I first came across her books um, a year or two ago. If I'm being honest, one of my book friends on BookTube or Bookstagram posted one of her photos and I was immediately sucked in to the cover to where I went out and immediately bought one of the books and um, so far I've dug deep and have not been disappointed since because if you want any kind of summery spring vibes these books are it I mean they are so charming looking at them makes me so happy and fills me with such warmth that I mean it, these books are basically the epitome of when people say covers matter and I know they say don't judge a book by their cover but I'm going the total opposite because these are the kind of books where the covers are just so perfect and exquisitely done that you cannot help but be compelled to pick them up so that said <laughs> let's talk about her haven point series because that was actually the series that um I saw and just again made me want to pick the books up now this series is all centered around just hearts and <laughs> by that i mean like healing hearts and heartwarming stories and you know speaking from the heart i know that sounds really corny but um with her being a romance author a lot of her books or rather i would say all of her books are very um plot driven and so you're going to get plots where you have characters um in a position to where they are brokenhearted and they are trying to mend themselves or um, characters who just whose story overall is just very heartwarming and very touching um, very sweet romances which again is another reason why this is perfect for this video because um, if you're looking for those warm sunny day feelings <laughs> this series is perfect now another series of hers that i want to recommend is her cape sanctuary series i think technically there are only two books so i don't know if you want to consider it a true series since she's still in the midst of writing it but regardless i wanted to include it on this list because um the cover again i'm so in love with these covers you guys i wish that i can just collect all of her books and just stare at them all day <laughs> but um as far as this series goes it is centered around a location Location. So um, just like how Jill Shalvis's Heartbreaker Bay is technically a location, Cape Sanctuary is the same. Um, this time it's set on the coast of California, I believe. So again, you're getting that small town feel. And what kind of 
brings the series together is the location. So in the first book, you have a woman returning home to Cape Sanctuary. <laughs> I don't remember if that's the actual name of it, but um, I'm going to call it that for the purpose of this video. But anyway, she's returning home. She's kind of um, bringing along with her emotional baggage and she's kind of trying to learn or rather um, pick herself back up. So you're getting not only the romantic relationship where she forges a new relationship, but at the same time, a lot of internal healing, which is something, again, that is interesting to read about if you want your romance filled with a little bit more, not necessarily depth, but you want... Um, you want plot lines and subject matter beyond just the romance between the couple. This next author, Debbie McComer, it would be remiss of me not to add her to this list. I mean, she is the queen, at least in my mind, of like springtime, summertime vibes. And the woman does um, series very well. She's got so many under her belt. She's got a fantastic long backlist, <laughs> which is perfect if you're just now discovering her or if you haven't read all of her books. And I'm actually going to clump these two recommendations together because I feel as if they're both equally epic, the one more so than the other, simply because there's a TV show based off of it. And I'm talking about Blossom Street series and her Cedar Cove series. Now, if the Cedar Cove one sounds familiar, it's because that is the one that has been adapted for TV with Andy McDowell, I believe, is one of the main characters, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but each of these are very similar in terms of them checking off each of the boxes in terms of um, being very um, character driven and located in a small picturesque town. But obviously, you know, they're technically different, starring different characters, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. But I, I just say all that to say, if you enjoy one series, you'll definitely enjoy the other. Both of them have epic backlists. Both series have wonderful covers. Um, in fact, I was first put on to the Blossom Street series. I believe that's the one that I'm thinking about. Um, I was first put onto it by the titles. Now, obviously the covers are gorgeous, but I loved how in her series she would um, name them by addresses. So you would have like 32 Blossom Street or 64 Blossom Street. I'm, those are not real book names. <laughs> Just trying to convey to you what I mean by the addresses. And I just thought it was so um, so fun. And even at one point, I believe she put out on her website a map of this fictional small town. And I'm obsessed with maps. And so you usually only get those in like historical books or uh, fantasy books. Neither of those genres I'm super familiar with. So I don't get a lot of map action. <laughs> so when I saw that she had one, I was like obsessed with it, even though I hadn't read all of the books in the series. So anyway, I digress. Um, needless to say, with these, you're definitely getting your small town feel. And um, beyond that, and this is not going to be any surprise if you have uh, watched the show or have read the books, but there is a heavy emphasis on the, um, the characters. It's a very character driven um, uh, set of books. And I say that to say that the characters go through an emotional arc, you know, obviously romances feature relationships. So that's usually what drives the story. But in her books, it goes beyond that because it's not just romantic relationships. You're getting like family relationship, friendship relationships. And so that's what gives it that depth. And one of the reasons that I wanted to make sure that I included Queen Debbie on this list. Okay, so another epic author, though I should probably have prefaced this entire video by saying all of these fantastic authors are epic, at least to me, at least to a avid romance reader. <laughs> but anyway, I wanted to talk next about Susan Mallory. Man, now me and Susan, Susan and I, whatever, we go way back <laughs> because she was one of the first authors who I read when I first started getting into the romance genre and I inhaled her books so much. I adored them. I still adore them to this day. And um, the books that she has written both and her backlist, as well as recently, I feel still fit this criteria of giving you the warm and fuzzy summertime vibes. So the first series that I want to talk about is probably, at least in my eyes, her most popular series, which is the Fool's Gold series. Now, this one is set also in California. Seems to be a trend. <laughs> Side note, I do feel like California gives those perfect spring summertime vibes, so I'm not mad at all about it. But anyway,
anyway, <laughs> the um, the original concept behind the Fool's Gold series is that there is a small town that seems to be um, cursed, essentially, not in like a fantastical or spooky way, but just a superstition where um, people in the town say that there's just not enough men, or rather the men there don't seem to stick around, so there's basically plenty of women around. And... Um, Again, you say that out of context, that could kind of work for any genre, <laughs> but when it comes to romance, that's kind of like the impetus that kicks off the entire series. This is a fantastic series. It meets all the criteria, cover, plot lines, blah, 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 but um, I love it because of its extensive backlist. There have been so many books in the series, and um, it's just an epic, solidly written romance series, and I don't even know how to describe it beyond that. I think that it's just so complete <laughs> that it really is a great example of good romance writing because these stories will stick with you even if you inhale the books you will want to savor them because you want to sit with these characters you want to sit into this town and you know that makes not only just a good romance but just a good story in general so obviously I wanted to mention it to you all so that you can check it out. Now her next series that I want to talk about is the Blackberry Island series. This one, again, very similar to Fool's Gold in the sense to where that it is kind of centered around a location, Fool's Gold being at Fool's Gold, the town, and then Blackberry Island being this island. And it does similar things in the sense to where each of the books focuses on a specific character. Um, the location though, because of this Blackberry Island, this island, so to speak, definitely will give you those um, kind of escapism vibes. Is that if that's what you're looking for, especially around now? And she has a fantastic way with words, so you're no doubt going to be transported to this fictional island to kind of live your summertime dreams. <laughs> you know, you're gonna want to put on your sunglasses, pack your beach bag, and stuff like that. And ugh. Man, you're just going to want to escape. So I just, I love both of these series so much and I hope that you do too. Last author that I want to talk about is Robin Carr. Again, another epic author and it's so funny <laughs> because this first series is also set in California and now that I'm thinking about it, that's totally coincidental and I could have easily renamed this video like epic romances set in California. Um, but I didn't, so anyway, we're just gonna keep with this theme. But um, yes, Robin Carr, and I wanna actually kick off with her um, Virgin River series, which again, if that sounds familiar, it's because they have adapted it to TV. I haven't watched it, so I'm not exactly sure who the main lead is, but um, needless to say, based on the title of the series, you can guess, you can surmise that it takes place around um, a location, Virgin River. Uh, again, in California. <laughs> um, those of you in California are super lucky to be there, by the way, because you have all of these fictional places to visit. Um, but anyway, so yes, the first book actually starts off, we are introduced to a, um, a widow, and she moves to a I don't want to call it remote because I don't remember if it's a remote, but she ends up um, packing up her things and moving to Virgin River in this cabin. It ends up being a huge ordeal, like undertaking to fix it up and blah, blah, blah. Um, but there's a small kink and that is that there is a baby left on her doorstep. So of course she's trying to figure out what's going on with that. You are also obviously introduced to the characters in this small town of Virgin River and the rest of the series kind of unfolds from there. If you're really wanting a heartwarming story, something that does sit with you or you want to savor every page because you want to just stay with these characters longer, again, I highly recommend these books and the covers are gorgeous. So it's even worth it to um, pick them up in some form of e-copy or um, paperback copy to look at them on their on your shelves because they're just so gorgeous. If, again, you are anything like me and you are craving those heartwarming, sweet, um, emotionally impactful romances around this spring, summertime, and they're not bad to look at as well, hopefully you found this list helpful. Um, Again, there is a Ray Ann Thane book that is sitting on my shelf somewhere that kind of kicked off the whole idea about this. And I just, I love 
springtime. <laughs> now, I know this is technically kind of teetering between spring and summer. When we get into the heat and the humidity of summer here in Atlanta, might not love it so much, but right now I'm soaking it all in. I love the flowers. I love the um, serene landscapes, and I love books that kind of transport you into those locations, which again is why I wanted to recommend all of these to you. So that said, I hope you found them helpful. As I mentioned at the beginning, please let me know if you've read any of these and if so, what you thought about them, if you have a favorite series. And um, if I didn't list an author or you have an author or a series that you think would fit perfectly into this topic or theme, leave the recommendations down below for myself and other viewers. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy. If you did, please like and subscribe. And in the meantime, I'll talk to you guys later. Happy reading. Bye.